Hey, today I have a quick tutorial on how to create better floor plans with these five tips. Of course, I'm talking about doing this on the iPad using Procreate, but these tips are just as much applicable across other apps like Mofolio Trace, Concept, Sketch, and etc. So let's get into it. Tip number one is line weight. More specifically, using the right line weight to draw. Personally, I tend to just use two, a thin and a thick brush. I wanna say 90% of my drawings are done with the same line weight, but depending on what I'm drawing, I like to spend the first couple minutes at the beginning of each drawing session to test out various brush sizes to determine a fit that is right for the drawing's purpose. For example, if it's a quick napkin sketch, then maybe it's a bigger brush. If it needs to be more presentable, like a nice illustration, then it may be a smaller brush. The reason behind it is if you're starting out with a thinner line weight, then you're gonna have to put in a little bit more details on the paper in order for the drawings to look full and not empty, which is more time consuming. But it also requires the design to be a little bit more thought out to look believable. If the design is kind of half-baked, then you can hide some of these details with a thicker pen. On the flip side, if your lines are too thick, then you're not gonna be able to draw the finer details of something to show it clearly, and changing it to a thinner line weight at this point so you can include more details isn't going to look good. What I used to do was to find a reference drawing that I liked, and if it has similar amount of details to what I have in mind, then I'll bring it into the iPad with half the opacity and either increase or decrease the brush size in order to match the line weight from the example. I find this helpful when you're not sure where to start. Of course, I don't do this anymore because I'm a pro now. Now back to some real examples. If I am drawing a plan or a section, I basically use just one line weight to draw mostly everything except where a wall or a floor are being cut. Then I will use a thicker pen around the profile of something or a section cut to increase its readability from other things. Tip number two is pattern and hatches. I think it's a good idea to learn a few basic hatching and pattern technique as a way to differentiate various information in your drawing. This could be wood, glass, concrete or plaster. You can learn some of these techniques in my other video here. As a result of this, this is going to create some hierarchy, which makes it easier for someone's eye to navigate through the drawing and identify various information. This is about improving your overall legibility. Tip number three is to annotate your drawing. I'm not talking about writing like an architect or architectural lettering, though it would certainly help and make your drawing look even more legit. I actually think I need help in this department, so if you have any tips on how I can improve my architectural writing, let me know in the comments below. But what I am referring to is adding concise text and critical dimensions to highlight certain elements that might easily be missed. Doing this will add another dimension and texture in your graphics department. Tip number four is an easy one, and you might have heard of this before, which is crossing your line at the intersection just a bit. Doing so will make your drawing sketchier looking, which is what we want out of a sketch in the first place, to suggest the design is still in process, with room to grow and change. I think the sketchier the drawing is, the more there is to imagine. I see sometimes beginner sketchers putting a little too much effort into connecting the corners and the edges, making their sketch look rather polished, which actually has the opposite effect to the point of a sketch. Tip number five is a classic as well. It's called hit, stop, and go. It's very hard for someone to draw a straight continuous line without the assist of a ruler. If the intent is to keep the line as straight and parallel as possible on paper, it's actually much easier if you stop your straight line if it's so and often and pick it up after a short break than trying to keep drawing one continuous line. This is easier on the iPad because you have the option to use the digital grid that can kind of guide you across the page. If you can incorporate some of these strategies, I think your drawing is going to look better. Down in the description, I have my custom Procreate brush settings for you to download and a few of my curated study files from real projects that I've worked on so you can actually open up in Procreate to look through. I think by looking through someone else's workflow can really accelerate your own learning. If you'd like to support my work, there is no better way than getting yourself or a friend a unique piece of art from my Etsy shop. I'll leave a link in below. It's a perfect way to remember that favorite city or national park that you've been dying to return when COVID is over. In the meantime, I think you will like this next video here.